that is more reminiscent of the white corked hat horse riding colonialist divide and rule that was once the order of the day in this country. Just another look is aware that sometimes he uses these same terms to disparage and rubbish the colonial experience. But he heard him himself on independence. We must not debunk our history. <laughs> Of course, we must debunk our history as far as you are concerned. <laughs> you know why you don't want us to debunk it? <laughs> you know why you don't want us to debunk it. But we have to reject much of what has happened to us. Isn't that why you were anxious to talk reparation? They owe us, as far as you're concerned. They owe us. Yeah? But your own political philosophy, as enunciated before us, seemed to bear little difference from the white cork hat horse riding colonialist divide and rule policy that we have had over us, overshadowing us. You can't get up on a horse. That's probably why you're not riding one. But you became the first prime minister to suddenly decide that you need a fleet of vehicles to fly around the country with. No previous prime minister ever felt that that was necessary. You're the first prime minister that seemed to suggest that people want to go after you for what? James Mitchell used to leave the office and walk down to the wharf, walk bare, barefoot around the beaches of Beckway. You're the first prime minister that seemed to feel that you're doing something that people would dislike you for, such that they may wish to hurt you. And when that didn't happen, you came to the parliament and created a, a, a fanciful story that seemed to suggest you had information Perhaps more so than the, even the police had because the police couldn't even make a case based on what you had said in the nation's parliament. But you presented a very detailed story of a plot to assassinate you. But even before that, you had already had multiple vehicles shuttling you around. You're the first prime minister in this country that felt that you need to pull yourself so apart by with, with all these vehicles flying through town at different times that suits you. Because you've seen yourself in this role requiring this kind of treatment. There is little difference, you know, between that anxiety to move in that direction that what we saw from some of the people that emerged around us, Eric Gary and Papa Doc in Haiti, there's not much difference in fundamental principle with your desire to be seen as a near king flying around with multiple vehicles, sirens blaring so that everybody know you're coming, your windows up and you're, yes, you're gone. That's what they were like, Papa Doc and Gary. That's how they treated their own people. The kind of adoration and adulation that they seem to have felt necessary to possess. Is there much of a difference between that and what you have been seeking to do in your own St. Vincent and the Grenadines? What the reports coming out of Cuba with regard to claims 
that you may have indicated that only you could have constructed the international airport in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Were those true? Were those true? <laughs> you know, some people have illusions of grandeur. And some people seek to make those illusions real. Hubris is perhaps too simple a word and a concept with which to describe the politics of Ralph Gonzalez. It must be bothersome to him that his books seem to have difficulty making it to the reading list of universities of substance. This may well have to do with a certain perception of the repetitive nature and a seeming weakness in terms of content. This may also explain why he seems so anxious to present his books as gifts to his ministers and potential candidates as essential reading. But you know, the most recent independence message or independence day message of the prime minister was a reminder of the continued refusal to address truth beyond that which appears convenient. Of course, he chose to remind us, quote, in establishing a colonial state and a plantation economy in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the British were ruthless and single-minded. Ruthless and single-minded. In the process, they carried out a campaign of native genocide and forced exile of most of the indigenous people. They instituted the enslavement of Africans between 1764 and 1838. Over 55,000 Africans were disembarked on slave ships between then and the end of the slave trade in 1807. And the British recruited as indented servants nearly 6,000 liberated Africans, Madeiran, Portuguese, and East Indians between the 1840s and 1881 to supplement the, the labor of the nearly 23,000 enslaved Africans who were formerly freed on Emancipation Day. End of quote. He thought it necessary on the nation's 40th anniversary of independence to remind us of this. Yep. The British were ruthless and single-minded. You know, dear friends, if we were to examine the last 18 years, of governance in this country. What is your take on it? Has there been a certain level of single-mindedness? Who told us about when I swivel in the big chair? Huh? Who told us about when I swivel in the big chair? Has there not been a certain single-mindedness? And we ask you to judge for yourself whether or not you believe there has been a certain level of ruthlessness, quote-unquote, in the way in which the country has been governed. You judge for yourself. Do you believe there has been a certain level of ruthlessness in the way in which the ULP administers governance in this country. There is a constant denial 
of political victimization. We have had more cases nolly prost during the tenure of this government than ever before in the history of this country. And look at what cases have been nolly prost. Look at who have been involved in the cases that have been nolly prost. And that's why we ask you to determine whether in truth and in fact our opening statement rings true. The more things appear to change, the more they actually remain the same. Have we really moved away from the ruthlessness and single-mindedness to which Gonzales referred in his Independence Day message of the British. One of the hidden truths in what he has said, you know, has to do with the fact that the majority of the population are from Africa. And Larry Bascom it was who kept reminding us, hello, can't we understand what this should have meant in terms of our leadership? But we continue to have the minority controlling the economy and the politics and whatever else. <laughs> that is one of the hidden truths in this reality. That is one of the hidden truths in the reality. There is still that vestige of colonialism. That vestige of slavery. That has left us politically myopic. Unwilling to discuss this truth. What Gonzalez did not say was that the divide and rule policies, the divide and rule policies that held sway over our beloved country at the time of the colonial experience remains in place today. Those policies remain in place today, even under his watch. And indeed, particularly under his watch. That's what he did not say on Independence Day 2019. Will he deny that today under his watch there is still evidence of racism in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Will he deny today that his political praxis has left the country caught up in the throes of a blighted divisiveness that is at best tribalistic to the very core. Will he deny that? Will Gonzalez deny today that he is the one that has to shoulder full responsibility for having forged what appears to be a nation filled with hate Filled with hate resulting from the aforementioned political divisiveness. It is a nation filled with hate. Gonzal seemed to gloat during his independence address this year when he says, quote, In our 40th year of the reclamation of independence, Renewal at 40. <laughs> Praise mongering for you, Papa. Praise mongering, Papa. <laughs> In our 40th year of the reclamation of independence. <laughs> it sounds good. It reads good. <laughs> it is utter political trite. Utter political rubbish. 
Renewal at 40. Renewal of what? You and your party faithful are renewing something. <laughs> but not this society. Renewal of what? But you see, politicians have this way of deluding themselves, you know. They, 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 they believe like, like some of the, the, the stars that the media keep throwing in our faces, that anything they say becomes, you know, popular. And, and the politicians are like that. And Gonzalez appears to be following in that line. So everything you say should become thick. So <laughs> we, we wake up one morning and say, boy, <laughs> sounds like a good idea. Renewal at 40. <laughs> Renewal of what? What are you renewing? What exactly are you renewing? And over the 40 years, where have you really made any significant attempt at reclaiming your independence? Whose independence are you really claiming? Whose independence are you really claiming? To have... Are you, have you been reclaiming? Where's the evidence that over the last 40 years, any of the governments have really sought to reclaim our independence? And whose independence? The East Indians? The Madeirans? The Portuguese? The Africans? Whose independence? Whose? What you did not say in your anniversary address is that of all the groupings that you made mention of, the only ones that were genuinely seasoned and rid of their culture were the Africans. The others came on terms and conditions that were favorable compared to the Africans. They came here not knowing who we were. Having been rid even of our names. You all came. Possessed. You had resources given to you. You had contractual arrangements. We didn't have that benefit. We did not have that benefit. So it wasn't a level playing field and it hasn't been leveled over the last 40 years. And the last 18 of those 40 years have been a sort of political trauma for many people in this country. Join the line and whine or stay in a corner and pine. That has been the real mantra, hasn't it? If you don't join the line, and wine with the party, you suffer. You're going to pine in a corner. That is the real mantra that has been at work for the last 18 years. And now it suits your pride and purposes in the twilight of your political career to dare to suggest to this nation rather glibly renewal at 40. <laughs> I renew all at 40 in this 40th year of reclaiming our identity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Art Linkletter used to say, you know, people say they done these things. Well, politicians are worse. They say they done these things. They do. And they say it with such flair. <laughs> That they get people buying into it. But they don't realize that the people buy into it because that is the only way they can access the fruits of labor. <laughs> One man say that um, at, the, at, the, at the meeting, yeah, you heard Saboto. Incentions are enjoying the fruits of labor, meaning the Labor Party, not of labor. In terms of work and toil, the fruits of the labor, meaning the labor party, that is what has happened to our politicians. They can spout nonsense with flair. 
It's not Vincentian Saboto. It's not Vincentian that they join the fruits of the Labour Party. It is one segment of the Vincentian population. One segment of the Vincentian population is enjoying the fruits of that labor. Those are the ones you saw jumping up in red. Those are the ones you see each day cleaning the side of the roads who believe that even a menial task as that has been allocated to them because they show loyalty to the party. That's why they wear red, even though they're cleaning the side of the road. The ones who enjoy the fruits of the labor are those who believe that the major colors of their of their day-to-day jo- and their day-to-day jobs should be red because the ministers and the the, 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 the the minions must see them as identifying loyally with the party. Those are the ones who enjoy the fruits of labor. It's not the whole country, Samboto. Not the whole country at all. But if you were speaking to the party that you want to lead. And so even at that at, even at that celebration, the political battle between Saboto and Camilo for the leadership of the party were being played out. So who could say the best things to appease the party? Is that the nation you all were talking to, you know? There was no intention to send any message to the nation. It was to your own party faithful you were telling. Let us continue to own the country by owning the jobs. Those are the fruits of people's labor. We own the jobs too. They have fulfilled that. They're in control. But don't ever, ever Saboto or Camilo or Ralph attempt to say to this nation that they are enjoying the fruits of your labor party. For some, it's a bitter pill to swallow because they don't know where the next meal is coming from. Everything has gone consistent with exactly what was planned from the very beginning. Own the campaign, own the party, own the country, and own the jobs too. That is what we have become. A nation of mere sycophants. That is the renewal that perhaps you are thinking of. That is the independence that you seem to think that you have been reclaiming. In our 40th year of the reclamation of independence, renewal at 40. What is that? It is just the mouthing of yet another catchphrase. It is the usual political phrase mongering to which Gonzales has grown accustomed. The fact is that what has happened to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the past 40 years has had nothing to do with reclamation of any independence on our part. Indeed, if we are true to ourselves, for the past 40 years, we have simply traded external colonial masters for those who have been born here. Edward Baffitt's Creole. We have engendered a Creolization colonialism, a Creolized colonialism that equates at once Franz Fanon's black skins white masks and his wretched of the earth in one fell swoop. Repeat it. We have engendered a creolized colonialism that equates at once Franz Fanon's black skin white mass and his the wretched of the earth in one fell swoop. The past 18 years in particular has taken us back to the colonialism we thought we had long since overcome. Instead of having forged a new people, renewed and committed, imbued with the genuine spirit of independence, we have instead carefully cultivated a nation of dependence, a nation 
of mendicants, a nation of political sycophants who are forced to wait on Papa to deliver the trinkets each year. A few dollars here, a few pieces of lumber, steel, galvanized and some cement there and everywhere. Everywhere we shower political platitudes, political platitudes that cajole us all into believing that had it not been for him, for Papa, we would have been much, much worse off. Papa, unfortunately, fails to acknowledge where and when he has failed. He merely moves along, reminding everyone of what worked as far as he is concerned. Psychologists caution us about people in leadership who convince themselves continually that only they could have achieved this and that for and on behalf of the people. They boast of themselves and their capabilities, in the process, rather systematically, belittling the very people they claim to love ever so dearly. They are none so blind as those who do not wish to see. In the past 18 years, we have had the old-time politics of megalomania. We speak glibly about a so-called education revolution, yet treat our people as though they have never been educated. We still point to buildings as our major achievements. It does not matter that we do not maintain those buildings. We simply change the tune. So we build the bridge at Rabaka. We built the bridge at Rabaka. And when the salt destroyed the rails, we then proclaimed that bridges without rails may actually be somehow safer. We promised to unite the country by road communications, more particularly by the construction of a cross country road. We then boasted of the first phases starting on the extremities, leeward and windward sides. That was the end of the project, silence from the government. Our ecotourism trust was to be manifested by the construction of an ecotourism hotel across the Dry River. That too disappeared into thin air. We constructed a new pavilion at Arnold's Vale, and from its very first game of cricket, the toilets went out of operation. They are still non-functional for the public after 12 years of construction. We have constructed the Argyle International Airport, but seem afraid to inform the unsuspecting public of the maintenance cost resulting from the salt that batters the facility every day and the impact of the life on the lifespan of what we so proudly built. We have, according to the Prime Minister, a so-called education revolution. He seems ignorant of the continued decline in student performances in mathematics. He's also apparently ignorant of the fact that in the recent past, the failure rate in English has become a major challenge to that of mathematics. Perhaps the real issue is that neither Gonzales nor anyone else can explain precisely what constitutes this so-called education revolution. And hence, we look for any sort of evidence of even the most minimal progress to acclaim the success of this so-called education revolution. But one of the problems facing St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the past 18 years is the significant in increase in the level of intolerance that plagues our country. The mere application of one's critical thinking skills to discuss anything happening in the country had become intolerable to the minions of the ULP. They have apparently been socialized into sheer intolerance. One is not supposed to be critical of anything undertaken by the government. By the same token, the level of intolerance that has been systematically cultivated amongst the minions, seemingly fueled by the leadership, is that there can exist no intelligence, no scholarship, no ideas 
outside of the party and more particularly outside the leadership cadre of the ruling party. The country has become fixated into a kind of decadence, not the least of which is moral decadence. Enough said. You know, friends, this is where we are. <laughs> this is where we are today. On the eve of another general elections. <laughs> we will see things that we've never thought possible being done in rapid fire time. It doesn't matter, they think, or they seem to think. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they will believe whatever we do is in their best interest. And so, on the 28th day of September 2019, marks 4,705 days since the disappearance of SVG Air J8VAX. Piloted by Dominic Gonzalez with one passenger, Rashid Ibrahim. Today marks 3,395 days since the disappearance of another SVG aircraft. J8SXY piloted by Suresh Lakram. Not so long ago, dear friends, on the 19th of September, we observed the 11th anniversary of the gruesome death of Patricia Bowman. We continue to talk about this issue. Because as far as we are concerned, justice has not yet been served. Perhaps, you know, one day it just might. Enough said. You've been listening to another edition of Night nice Radio's Kalalu presentation, Just Another Look. Just Another Look is an innovative, exciting, albeit decidedly provocative, and yes, yes, certainly controversial Socio-political analysis of issues of a local, regional, and international nature. Just another look is heard only on Nice Radio First Air on Saturdays at 6 p.m., repeated on Sundays at 9 p.m. You can catch us on the World Wide Web, www.niceradio.info, or you can check out our Just Another Look blog, www.justanotherlook.com. I am, of course... <laughs> Joseph.